Hello everyone, it's been a while. I don't want to waste any more of your time. We have a couple games to go over, so let's pick up where we left off. We last left off, uh, I believe the last time I talked to you guys was when the Green Bay Packers defeated the Arizona Cardinals on October 28th. Uh, I believe I put out a video a couple days later, so it's been over a full month, and let's get back into it. So, picking up where we left off, uh, on November 7th, my 21st birthday, the Green Bay Packers traveled to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs. Um, in this game, the Green Bay Packers were without the services of Aaron Rodgers as he had contracted COVID, um, and so he was unable to play that game. So, Jordan Love got his first ever career start, thanks to Aaron Rodgers being ruled out. Um, in this game, uh, Kansas City did defeat the Green Bay Packers 13-7. Jordan Love threw the ball 34 times for completing 19 passes for 190 yards. He did throw uh, his first career touchdown. He also did throw his first career interception as well, a 1-to-1 -one ratio. Aaron Jones carried the ball 12 times for 53 yards, and Randall Cobb was the Packers' leading receiver with three receptions for 50 yards. Offensively, no Aaron Rodgers, unfortunately, meant little to no production. Uh, defensively, the Packers looked pretty good despite all the injuries. Uh, on, offensively, the Packers fumbled the ball three times, and they did lose one of those. And Mason Crosby also went uh, 0 for 2 on field goals. Uh, 0 for 2 on field goals, so two field goals means six points not put up on the board, and the Packers lost by six. So if Mason Crosby doesn't miss either of those field goals, we have a tie game. Who knows what happens if it goes into overtime, or maybe the momentum changes, whatever. But that's in the past, and we move on. Uh, also defensively, um, like I said, they looked pretty good despite all the injuries they have to, or on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, they did hold Kansas City's potent offense to 13 points, which is actually pretty good considering Kansas City can easily put up 35, 42 points on any team on any given Sunday. Um, Individually, Rashawn Gary, he's looking legit. I believe he, if if the league were to have a most improved player, or they might. Uh, I don't know if they do, though. But uh, for the Packers, the most improved player is Rashawn Gary. He is looking like a beast more so every week. Every week that goes by, he just keeps getting better. For Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes threw the ball 37 times, completing 20 passes, had 166 yards. Uh, Damien Williams was a leading rusher for them, 19 carries, 70 yards. And Travis Kelsey was a leading receiver had five receptions for 68 yards and a touchdown. Uh, my overall notes for the game is that Kansas City didn't necessarily play great. They just got lucky that Rodgers wasn't playing. And because Rodgers wasn't playing, the Packers didn't play, at least offensively, they didn't play as well as what they would have if Aaron Rodgers were playing. I firmly believe that if Aaron Rodgers plays this game, then the Packers win and defeat Kansas City. But it's in the past, and we move on. The next game we have to go over took place on November 14th where the Seattle Seahawks traveled to Green Bay to take on the Green Bay Packers. In this game, the Green Bay Packers defeated the Seattle Seahawks 17 to nothing, which marked Russell Wilson's first ever shutout. This was the first time that Russell Wilson had ever been shut out, uh, meaning scoring zero points ever in his career. Uh, for the Green Bay Packers, Aaron Rodgers threw the ball 37 times for 23 yards for uh, 37 times uh, completing 23 passes, excuse me, for 292 yards, and he had one interception, uh, no touchdowns in this game for Aaron Rodgers in his uh, return to the field after being out the week before due to having COVID. Um, for the Packers, uh, the Packers' leading rusher was A.J. Dillon. He carried the ball 21 times for 66 yards and had two touchdowns. Devontae Adams was a leading receiver with seven receptions for 78 yards. Offensively for the Packers, the they almost got back to normal. Um, AR-12 returned. they still not quite all there yet, but they did enough. They scored 17 points, and the defense did its job to win the game. Uh, defensively, they continue to impress. Rashawn Gary keeps getting better. Uh, that secondary, despite not having Jair Alexander, uh, Rasul Douglas and Kevin King have really picked up the slack. And, um, yeah, I mean, the defense continues to play great. And um, Joe Barry deserves a lot of credit for uh, taking this, you know, working with what he's gotten despite all the injuries and continuing to play the defense. Uh, at this point, I'd say at an elite level. Um, 
For Seattle, Russell Wilson threw the ball 40 times, completing 20 passes for 161 yards, and he threw two interceptions, had no touchdowns on the day. Obviously, they scored zero points. Alex Collins was the Seahawks' leading rusher, 10 carries for 41 yards. And then uh, Gerald Everett was the leading receiver, eight receptions for 63 yards. Uh, my overall notes for this game, the offense played all right. They did okay, you know, air 12, coming back, a little bit slow. Um, but the defense played great and uh, allowing zero points, obviously. The Packers win 17 to nothing. We move on to the next game. All right, so the next game we got to go over was on November 21st, where the Green Bay Packers traveled to Minnesota to take on the Vikings. Uh, this game had trap game written all over it. I'm also going to call this the Justin Jefferson game, and I'll explain why in a minute here. Uh, Minnesota ended up defeating Green Bay 34 to 31. Green Bay won, or Minnesota won on a uh, last second field goal. Um, yeah. For Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers uh, completed 23 passes on 33 attempts, uh, 385 yards and four touchdowns. Aaron Rodgers got back to his normal self. And uh, with this game, probably puts himself back in the MVP conversation. I don't think he's going to win it this year, but he put himself in that conversation. A.J. Dillon was, again, the Packers' leading rusher, for uh, had 11 carries for 53 yards. And Marquez Valdez-Scantling was the Packers' leading receiver. He had four receptions for 123 yards and a touchdown. The offense was its usual efficient form. They looked great. Rodgers played great. You know, well-oiled machine, all that stuff. Uh, 31 points, pretty good. Uh, defensively, uh, pretty much all I can say for the Packers defensively in that game against Minnesota was they did everything well besides cover Justin Jefferson. Uh, Delvin, they held Delvin Cook. Uh, he had 22 carries, only 86 yards, and a touchdown, which, I mean, is a little bit less than what you would expect out of Delvin Cook. Um Trick Cousins threw the ball 35 times, completing 24 passes, had 341 yards and three touchdowns. And then Justin Jefferson, his numbers were just absolutely insane this game. He had eight receptions for 169 yards, which is a little bit over 20 yards per reception, and he had two touchdowns. Justin Jefferson pretty much torched the Packers secondary this game. Uh, overall notes for this game, overall the offense was fine. It's just that the defense couldn't cover Justin Jefferson. Um, the Packers left too much time on the clock. They left uh, a little bit over two minutes for Kirk Cousins, and they drove the ball down the field just enough so that Minnesota could win the game on a last-second field goal. Uh, that's pretty much it for that game. It hurts a lot to see the Packers lose on a last-second field goal. It hurts for any team, if you're a fan of any team, to lose on a last-second field goal. But what can you do? It's one week, there's 17 games, and we move on to the next one. The last game we have to go over was uh, took place on November 28th. The Los Angeles Rams traveled to Green Bay to take on the Packers. Uh, the game, I'm calling this one the Jordan versus the Monstars game because the Los Angeles Rams have acquired a bunch of talent. And however, the Green Bay Packers got the job done and defeated the Rams. Um, Aaron Rodgers threw the ball 45 times, completing 28 passes, had 307 yards and two touchdowns. He also did rush for a touchdown and made Jalen Ramsey look kind of silly. Uh, A.J. Dillon carried the ball 20 times, had 69 yards, and Devonta Adams caught eight catches, or had eight receptions for 104 yards. Uh, offensively for the Packers against the Rams, uh, broken toe and all, Aaron Rodgers tore apart LA's star-studded defense, and the credit to the offensive line, I don't think they allowed a sack in this game. They might have allowed one um, but uh, obviously when you're going up against Aaron Donald, Von Miller, and Jalen Ramsey on the defense, uh, you would expect that uh, they would have done a bit more and sack Rodgers more, considering the uh, Green Bay Packers did not have three of their starting linemen that game. Uh, defensively, Rasul Douglas's pick six off of Stafford helped the cause, and the defense did just enough to avoid having the Rams come back late in the fourth quarter because it wouldn't be a Green Bay Packer game if you weren't having a heart attack as a Green Bay Packer fan in the last, like, five minutes of the fourth quarter. The Packers always allow their opponents to start to come back, but usually they can uh, hold them off just enough where the Packers win the game. Eventually I have a feeling that's going to come back to bite them, though, but we'll see what happens. Uh, for the Rams, statistically, Matthew Stafford... 
threw the ball 38 times, completed 21 passes, had 302 yards, threw for three touchdowns, and he did throw one interception, obviously that pick six to Rasul Douglas. Uh, Matthew Stafford, uh, excuse me, Matthew Stafford also did uh, fumble the ball after Rashawn Gary had a strip sack on Stafford, um, which set up the Packers in good field position, uh, which is which led to the Aaron Rodgers rush touchdown that I mentioned earlier. Uh, I forget his first name, but Henderson Jr., their, uh, their running back for L.A., had uh, 16 carries for 55 yards, and Cooper Cup was their leading receiver with seven receptions for 96 yards. Uh, my overall notes for this game, the Green Bay Packers showed that they were the better team, and they get a solid W. With this W over the Los Angeles Rams, the Green Bay Packers have swept the NFC West division this year, uh, defeating the 49ers, the uh, Cardinals, the Seahawks, and the Rams. So the Green Bay Packers um, going up against what many considered at the beginning of the year the best division in football, the Green Bay Packers have defeated all four of those teams. Uh, so, I mean, take that for what you will. The Cardinals, the Rams... And the 49ers are all pretty good teams, and the Packers defeated them, along with the Seattle Seahawks. So after this victory, the Green Bay Packers had a bye week this past Sunday, and uh, now it is Thursday before uh, the Green Bay Packers take on the Chicago Bears in Lambeau. Um, I would expect that the Packers win. Um, I didn't really make a prediction for this one. Um, I... I mean, it's in Green Bay. Uh, Green Bay, uh, specifically Aaron Rodgers, owns the, the Chicago Bears. Uh, like he shouted out earlier in the year, I talked about that in a previous video. Um, I would predict, I, I guess my prediction would be like 31-17. to 17. Justin Fields will get the start for Chicago. Um, I'm, I'm going to pick a win. I'm going to predict a win. Obviously, I'm a Packer fan. And also, I just think the Green Bay Packers have the Chicago Bears number. But of course, we will see what happens. Well, I certainly meant to get this video out before the Green Bay Packers played the Chicago Bears, but alas, I did not. So here we are. I'm going to uh, go over the Chicago Bears and Green Bay Packers football game, and I will finally get this video out because, like I mentioned before, it's been a while. So uh, today is Monday. Yesterday, the Chicago Bears traveled to Green Bay to take on the Green Bay Packers in Lambeau Field on Sunday Night Football where the final score was 45-30 to with the Green Bay Packers winning. The Green Bay Packers currently sit at 10-3, and and after the Los Angeles Rams victory over the Arizona Cardinals a few hours ago, the Green Bay Packers now hold the number one seed in the NFC, and if they win out, they will have home field advantage for the second year in a row, and they will get the one and only uh, bye. So um, that would be really nice to get. Uh, we'll see how things play out in this last four weeks of the season. But getting back to yesterday's game, uh, for the Green Bay Packers, looking at the box score, Aaron Rodgers threw the ball 37 times, completing 29 passes, uh, had 341 yards and threw for four touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, A.J. Dillon was the Packers' leading rusher, had 15 carries for 71 yards. Aaron Jones also carried the ball five times for 35 yards. He did uh, score a touchdown rushing, and he also had a receiving touchdown as well. Uh, Devontae Adams, no surprise there. He was the Packers' leading receiver with 10 receptions for 121 yards. He had two touchdown catches. And then on the defensive side of the ball, Devondre Campbell, who was acquired um, at the beginning of the season to take over Christian Kirksey as a middle linebacker, um, He's been the captain of his defense, uh, the centerfold, and um, that leader uh, all year. Um, he's a very underrated signing, in my opinion. Um, but Devondre Campbell had 16 tackles, which is the uh, which is a team high for tackles, uh, I believe, since 2000. I have to double check the stats, but uh, I'm pretty sure since 2000. So the highest amount of tackles that someone has gotten in 21 years. Also defensively, Rasul Douglas. He also, or Rasul Douglas had a pick six. Um, he's now had a pick six in back-to-back -back games, which is the first time that this has happened for the Green Bay Packers since the 1960s. You would have to go back when legendary coach Vince Lombardi was coaching the Green Bay Packers when the last time a Packer had a pick six in back-to-back -back games. Rasul Douglas was signed off of the Arizona Cardinals practice squad 
uh, three weeks before they played the Cardinals. So that would be um, in the beginning of October. I would assume that would be uh, not long after Jair Alexander was injured in the Pittsburgh game. Uh, Brian Gutekunst went out and signed Rasul Douglas, and up to this point, he has looked great. Um, he's a great second option when uh, Jair comes back from injury, hopefully in the next week or two. Um, so we'll have Jair, we'll have Rizul Douglas, we'll have Eric Stokes, uh, we'll have Kevin King, who um, I'm very critical of, and that a lot of Packer fans are critical of Kevin King. Um, but he's played great so far in this regular season. Um, I was a little surprised that the Packers decided to bring back Kevin King, but I am glad that we have him. He hasn't been too bad so far. Um, so yeah, that Packers secondary, when Jair, gets, when Jair Alexander gets back, uh, it's going to be very hard to throw the ball against Green Bay. Um, now, I mean, with every bit of good, there is a little bit of bad. The good, bad, and ugly, I suppose. Um, it was mostly it was good. The offense was good. The defense was good. There wasn't really anything bad. Um, we'll skip right to the ugly, and that was the special teams. The special teams looked atrocious. Uh, the Green Bay Packers special teams allowed 259 yards, one touchdown on a 97-yard uh, uh, punt return. Uh, Chicago Bears special teams was definitely much better than Green Bay special teams. Um, but thankfully, the Green Bay Packers defense played well, and the offense showed out as always. Uh, for Chicago, they're looking at their box score. Justin Fields threw the ball 33 times, completing 18 passes. He threw for 224 yards. He had uh, two touchdowns and two interceptions, one of which being picked off by Rasul Douglas and the other one being picked off by Chan Sullivan. Uh, Justin Fields is also the Chicago Bears' leading rusher. He rushed the ball nine times for 74 yards as well. And then their leading receiver, I'm probably going to butcher his name, but Damier Bird. Uh, he had two catches for 76 yards and a touchdown. He did have one 54-yard touchdown reception. And then, obviously, the 22-yarder uh, as well. Uh, Jakeem Grant Sr., he was the uh, star of the Chicago side of things last night. Um, he was a return man. He returned punts, and I believe he also returned kicks as well. Um, he had three punt returns uh, for a combined total of 131 yards, uh, that long of 97 yards, that being that touchdown that he had. Um, my overall notes for this game is that the special teams needs a lot of work. Um, if the Green Bay Packers special teams keeps playing at the level, or even close to the level they played uh, yesterday against the Bears, it is most likely going to cost them games in the future, which in the regular season could cost them a number one seed, and of course in the playoffs could cost them a shot at the Super Bowl. Um, offensively, they continue to look great, even with uh, four backup linemen. Uh, Billy Turner did get injured. The uh, starting right tackle, Billy Turner, uh, did get injured in yesterday's game. He did not return to the game. Uh, I did see this uh, morning or this early this afternoon uh, that there is hope that he is not done for the season. So hopefully it's just a one to two week injury. We can get him back. Uh, the Packers should also be getting David Bakhtiari back in the next week or two. Um, so yeah, a lot of big name guys coming back for the Pack uh, in the next week or two. David Bakhtiari, Jair Alexander, and Zadarius Smith should all be returning for the last game or two of the season. Uh, hopefully they can lock up that number one seed and uh, get that bye week, get that extra week of rest, and have home field advantage. Uh, obviously we want the playoffs on the NFC side to go through Lambeau. We have a home field advantage there. And those warm weather teams like Arizona and Tampa Bay, they are not going to want to come up and play in the cold. Um... Getting back on track here, defensively, uh, the defense deserves a lot of credit, and Joe Barry deserves a lot of credit for orchestrating this defense and putting them in positions to succeed, even without um, Jair Alexander and Darius Smith and other injuries that have come up along the way. Um, uh, Joe Barry, uh, the defensive coordinator, he has greatly improved from um, back a couple years ago. He was uh, not that great of a defensive coordinator, and this year it helps when you have good personnel, um, but even with adding the personnel uh, upgrades that he has, he
he deserves a lot of credit for orchestrating and putting this defense in positions to succeed and um, underrated, uh, I guess, staff signing, if you will. Um, also, because of that improved defense, I think, in my opinion, it has changed the culture in Green Bay. Uh, the culture wasn't horrible, per se, but um, in years past, when the Packers would get down by more than one or two scores, you would see the Packers tend to just give up, and they would just kind of go through the motions just to get the game done. Whereas this year, looking at film and watching the games in real time, and even looking back at highlights, you can see that even when the Packers are down, this team does not give up. The defense continues to play as, as best as they can. Uh, you know that Aaron Rodgers is always going to give it his all, but everyone on the offense, everyone on the defense, um, they play the full 60 minutes. They don't just play 20 minutes. They don't just play three quarters. They play the full four quarters, all 60 minutes, and it has led them to a 10-3 and record in the number one seed so far. Uh, my final note for this game is to never mock the belt. Um, hopefully I'll put a picture up here of Robert Quinn mocking the belt after he got a sack on Aaron Rodgers in the first half. Uh, but uh, whenever you mock the belt, it does not end well. And uh, sorry, Chicago Bears fans, but Aaron Rodgers does still own you. <laughs>